Hey everybody, I'm Sid, I'm a high school senior, and welcome to a Usico walkthrough. Uh, today I'm going to be walking you through the uh, Usico 2018 bronze problem uh, from the December contest, Mixing Milk. This is a pretty easy problem, I would think, um, and it'll serve hopefully as good introduction into the world of competitive programming. And if you want more information for about competitive programming, refer to the links in the description. So with any competitive programming problem, the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously read through the problem statement. Now with Usico problems, there's usually a lot of fluff at the beginning. Um, farming is a competitive business. I, Farmer John is cool and all, but we don't really care about that. It's not really relevant to us solving this problem. Um, this problem statement is actually fairly small compared to a lot of Usico problem statements. So we're able to get to the gist of the problem pretty quickly, which is another thing that makes this problem easy. So Farmer John has three cows, Bessie, Elsie, and Mildred, who each produce milk with slightly different place, uh, taste, and he plans to mix those milks together, hence the name of the problem, mixing milk. Basically what's happening is that um, he has three buckets that contain milk from each of the three different cows. He takes in... Um, and then he just pours the milk from bucket one, which is from cow one, into bucket two, then bucket two into bucket three, then bucket three into bucket one, then bucket one into bucket two, so on and so forth, until he's poured buckets a hundred times. So what Farmer John pours from bucket A into bucket B, he pours as much milk as possible because obviously a bucket is going to have some sort of capacity. So what we have to do is tell Farmer John how much milk will be in each bucket after he finishes all 100 pours. Um, and Usico is a little bit different from other competitive programming uh, judges in where it takes in like inputs. You take an input from a file instead of from the standard input or standard output. And there are a few other judges that do this, but others like CodeForces and AppCoder, they take an input directly from standard input and standard output instead of from files. So the input is just going to be uh, a lot of lines containing um, two integers, the capacity of a bucket, and the amount of milk uh, that the bucket can hold. So there are three lines of input uh, for each of the three buckets, the capacity of the three buckets and the milks, uh, the amount of milk that they have at the beginning of each of the three buckets. And you're supposed to output three lines that will give the amount of milk in each bucket after a hundred poor operations. Now, you probably have an idea of what you might want to be doing with this problem already, and if you do, pause the video, go ahead, implement it, and come back. But typically, um, when I'm working with a competitive programming, no matter how easy it may seem at a first glance, I like to try and like just walk through um, what it's like on paper, and because I can't show paper, obviously, since I'm working on a computer, I have a handy drawing tablet that should hopefully work. So, um, since we only have to do 100 pours, we don't really have to worry about the efficiency, right? A computer can simulate 100 pours, like, instantly. So, um, something we need to be thinking about is we need to be keeping track of the capacity of the milk, uh, the capacity of the bucket, and then the amount of milk that the bucket has. And it's, this is pretty easy to do so. If you pour from bucket 1 into bucket 2, and bucket 1... Um, has some size, you know, has the capacity of C1, and bucket 2 has the capacity of size C2, then obviously, um, bucket, and, obvi and if bucket 1 has uh, M1 units of milk and bucket 2 has M2 units of milk, if M1 is greater than C2, well, if, if you're pouring this amount of milk into bucket number 2, and the sum of the milk in bucket one and the milk in bucket two already is greater than the capacity of the bucket, then you can't obviously then you can't pour all the milk that you have here. You can only pour um, the capacity minus um, enough to hit the max capacity of a bucket. So the amount of milk in a bucket after pour. So after you pour bucket one into bucket two, the amount of milk left in bucket one is M one minus the minimum of uh, M1 or C2 minus M2. And this is because either M1 
all of the milk that you can pour into bucket two won't be enough to hit the capacity or it'll overflow, which means you can only put enough to hit the capacity. So you'll either have zero, you'll either have zero, whatever units of milk left over, or M1 minus C2 minus M2, um, because you couldn't pour all of the bucket into C2. Another thing that we want to be just thinking about like really quickly is how do we actually code this? And usually when I'm doing competitive programming, I'll have like some helper functions. And obviously a function that we might want to help us out here is a pour function that takes in um, some the capacity of one bucket, um, the amount of milk in one bucket, and then the same thing for another bucket. And another thing that I want to be thinking about is Okay, so when we write that function, it should be enough. It should be easy enough. All we have to do is convert this bit of uh, logic into code, which we can do pretty quickly with C++ or Python or Java. Uh, if you're using Python for competitive programming, I, can, I urge you to consider switching um, because it's not fun to be working with. And we only really need to simulate and obviously to do the pours, we need a for loop or some sort of loop. So some sort of for loop. But the interesting thing is, instead of having it go 100 times for 100 pours, you actually only want it to go like 33 times because technically like each cycle of pours has three pours. And three times three, 33 is 99, which is less than 100. So you'll have one pour to do outside. So in here you do pour from one to two, then two to three, and then three to one. And then on the outside, you'd have one last pour from one to two, and then you just return um, M1, M2, M3, which are the milks in, which is the amount of milk in each of the three buckets. So that's enough of that. And I think we can start actually coding this up if I just open this, keep the problem statement here. How do I? Oh, that's not good. Is it not going to snap on the left side of my screen? And now it is. OK, finally. No, not finally. Still not finally, but we can fix it. All right, awesome. We are good. We are good now. I know how to operate a computer. So let's start coding this up and I'm going to be using C++ to do this because that is my preferred uh, language uh, for competitive programming. So our first thing is we're going to be using uh, the standard template library for C++ which is why I prefer using C++ over like Java or Python just has a bunch of built-in functions and data structures that are very useful when you're doing competitive programming. Uh, it's not the best idea when you're actually doing C++ like programming to make sure your stuff is readable to other people, but uh, don't care. Right now, uh, we're not going to worry too much about uh, reading in from files and whatnot, because right now we can just really worry about taking it input uh, just normally. So again, we know that we're getting uh, a few lines. <laughs> of data. We're getting three lines of data where we get C1, uh, then we also get M1, C2, M2, and uh, you don't have to do these all separate lines, but I am. C3 and M3. So we have all of our data, we got it in. Um, with files, it'd just be a little bit different, but that can be pretty quickly fixed. And now I want to write a pour function that will just change the capacity of a, this should be M1, int C2, int M2. That will just simulate what pouring is um, for our buckets. So we have this is the amount of the pour. It's going to be either M1 or C2 minus M2, which is basically just exactly what, oops, I forgot a semicolon. 
I was doing too much Python programming today. Which is basically what we showed when we were just drawing over and just figuring out what to do on like paper. Paper. So that's the amount of our pore. And then M1 uh, is going to be minus or equal to minus equal amount because you're decrementing the value uh, the amount of milk in bucket one by the amount that you're pouring and then you're decrementing the and then you're incrementing the amount of milk in bucket two uh, by the amount that is being poured all right awesome now we can get a for loop going for int i equals zero that's a nine coding like using a keyboard is hard when you have a drawing tablet in front of you okay so for loop set up and now we just need to pour uh, pretty easily we just need to pour c1 m1 uh, c2 m2 right and then you pour c2 m2 m uh, c3 m3 then you pour uh, c3 m3 m1 uh, wait c1 m1 and you pour M1, wait, no. Okay, so this is going to be 99 pours, leaving only one pour left to be done. Just pour C1, M1, C2, M2. And now, if you actually do count um, M1, M2, M line, M2, M line, M3, you should get the right answer as long as you're copy pasting the right input. So let's copy paste this input, run this, paste, three, four, and five. Hmm. Okay. I seem to have mess something up and I don't know what exactly declaring these right uh, hmm am I actually changing uh, m1 c2 let me just see if I'm changing anything at all. Paste. No, okay, interesting. So these values are never being changed, which means that this pour function is actually not doing anything. And I think that might be because, uh, let me see if this is the reason. Okay, uh, oops. And then we paste this in again. Okay, so basically what the problem was, was this pour function, since it's not actually returning anything, um, it's a void function and there was no return statement. Like it wasn't like necessarily updating these variables over here. But adding this ampersand symbol uh, after the integer and before the name of the variable will make it so that this function um, gets access to these variables that are outside, technically outside of its scope. And it can then modify them, which is what we want to do. And when we do that, we get the right output. And voila, we've technically solved the problem and we should be good to go. And the next, thing, the next step that you should be able to do by yourself is just turn this code and make it so that you can submit uh, it by accessing a file, uh, which should be easy enough, uh, which you can do with fstream, with fstream. And that's all I have for the solution for this problem. It's fairly simple, it's on the easier end of usical problems. I'll have more solutions coming out um, in the coming weeks to different problems as we get ready for the first usical contest of the year. Uh, if you're interested in looking at that, subscribe 
If you have any other suggestions for topics you want me to cover, uh, leave a comment and I'll be sure to reply to you and get to making some videos. My early applications are basic. My early applications are done. Only have regular decisions now, so I should be able to start making videos a lot more often. And if you want to, I don't know, if you want to follow a random programmer on Twitter uh, and Instagram, links to those are in my description. And I'm also setting up a Discord server, uh, I think, if you guys want to ask questions and stuff. And there will also be a link to that in the description as well. So I had a little bit of a brain break when I was doing poor. But that's what happens. Even the best programmers, of which I'm not, I'm, I'm decent, but I'm not the best, uh, get broken brains sometimes. So don't let that worry you. Um, but yeah, go have fun programming. Go have fun practicing. And until then, see ya.